one, two. Good. Good morning, church. Good to see everyone this morning. What an incredible time of worship. And when God is working, He's working, and we just need to be open and receptive. We are so, so privileged to be in this place of hearing God's voice. I just imagine being in a religious setting where you just come to church just for your conscience. There's nothing else but just to be, feel good on a Saturday morning. Oh, it's a Sunday morning. Sorry, not seven, seven day. Um, but uh, seven Saturdays. <laughs> but um, privileged to hear God's voice. We are not in survive, survival mode. We're in thriving mode. We don't want to just survive. We want to thrive. God wants us to thrive in His kingdom and in this world. And so um, just a little bit of vision and direction. What I felt for us as a church um, earlier last year, just felt that, that, that sense of a stretching. Tents are being stretched. And we had a whole series about the stretching of the tents and how our uh, capacity needs to be stretched, our character needs to be stretched. The reason is so that we can accommodate more. And so we had weddings and we were building into people's relationships. And we had five, Franz and I had five weddings that we, we went to uh, this year. And so it was almost like the stretching of the tents. And we had this wedding celebrations under this capacity that God has, has placed um, in us. And I believe that we are uh, going and still working on marriages, but just something of a focus on parenting and children for us. And um, just the picture that I've saw, what I saw was uh, moms and dads with paintbrushes and paint and they are um, painting this canvas from the bottom up and they're just painting and it's colorful and it's messy <laughs> and it's chaos. And I think never would I allow my kid to go and paint on a can on a stretch tent. Those things are expensive and you probably won't get the stains out. But I just believe God is saying, my sons, my daughters, paint on this, on this stretch tent. Um, enjoy yourselves. Let go. Um, don't be so stiff. Don't be so dull. Just just let it go. Just enjoy your time with your kids. And it's something that God has just placed on my heart uh, uh, this week. As I've been prepping, God says we need to have fun. We've got to break these walls of, of being so stiff and so, so uh, rigid. God wants us to have fun and enjoy His presence, enjoy our children. And so we can put up the first slide. We've got uh, my uh, title of my message is Fun, Family and Laughter. And so, um, if we can just imagine, then the, the, the one that came on first is just that picture of a child in paint, and it's chaos. Um, the second picture that I've got there is this is what we as parents would like it to be. We would like it to be controlled paint. It's so nice and so beautiful, just a few dots here and there. If we go to the next picture, this is the reality. <laughs> I don't know if you've experienced this. Normally, this happens when there's no parents around. Um, next one. That's something that, I don't know if you've, your kids has, has went through like a, a paint dip like that, but that's quite intense. And the last one. I'm like, yo, don't know if you guys went through that. Franz and I probably got, is waiting, this is probably waiting for us. But nothing you do will clean that stuff out. You'll just need to use paint and just refurbish your, break down the walls and build new walls. Um, <laughs> But yes, you know, sometimes we, we find ourselves in the space where yeah, our children are sometimes naughty. Um, but just this contrast of us enjoying this mess in a sense with our kids, not in a sense of sin and those kind of things, but just letting go and, and um, enjoying the time with them. I love what Dawn has said, that we need to have boundaries in place. That is important. And our children will often push those boundaries. And it's amazing that what Dawn has shared, that if there's no boundaries, a kid feels unsecure. He doesn't feel secure. And he will go back to the room and he will sit in the middle and he, 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 wo he won't know where his boundaries is. He feels insecure. So I want to say in the boundaries, in our standards, in our parenting, is to just to let go in a sense of not our boundaries, but just to our hearts to have fun with our kids. And just for us as young adults to have fun. And uh, we, I know that we, we, uh, some of us don't have kids. Some of us are married. Some are not. Some are out of, uh, your children are out of house. You're seniors. You are out of the house just to have fun and just enjoy God's presence and just breathe a bit. So um, <clears throat> what I also just want to encourage us that God wants us to become more childlike, not childish, but childlike um, into being humble um, and to, to be pure and unadulterated. Um, so yeah, 
I want to encourage us for this next few weeks, we're going to try to, after the service, have something fun that we can do with our children or even with uh, as, as a group, just do something fun together with our coffee. Just do something fun. I just, the Lord has challenged me in my personal life as, God, you need to have fun with your wife and your, and your kid. Just create a space where you guys can have fun. And I must say, sometimes it's costly to have fun and sometimes it's going to take some of your time. For us as dads, Especially when the children is, is young and they can't speak, we're like, no, I'll just wait till they can speak, then we can fung fist and we can do other stuff. But while they're young, they can stay with mom. And that's not true. We need to engage with our kids and love them and look them in the eye, give them a kiss once in a while and hug them um, and let them get to know us when they grow up. Um, I remember when Zia got, uh, was young, one year old, she, got one, she turned one. We didn't have a fancy one year old birthday party, we just had a smash cake, it's like this big. And we played out a, uh, a kumbersi um, on, the, on the grass. And we just allowed her to just break that thing and eat it. And, and so, and we just, it sometimes is costly. It's, it takes you to, to put something out outside. It's going to um, require some of your energy. It's going to require something for you to offer so that your children can enjoy the benefits of that space that we are creating. So in the church, we want to create a space where we want to we have a little bit of fun. And so for the next Five weeks up to the family camp, we'll, you'll see that we're going to have some um, board games and stuff that we're going to try to do. And we as a church want to engage with our kids, kids. We want to engage as a family and we want to laugh together. We want to have fun. And I know we've got food in at house that's waiting for us and there's a, a chicken in the roast and all those things. But just let's prioritize just five or ten or fifteen minutes just to engage with one another, enjoy a board game or two, and uh, then we can go off. Matthew 18, verse 1 to 6. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called the little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as a little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. And so I want to ask, do we want to be great um, in God's kingdom? And do we want to inherit God's kingdom? And Jesus is saying, if you want to be great in my kingdom, you need to become like a little child. And so once again, it's not becoming childish, but becoming childlike in our sense of our heart, in our character. It's becoming humble. It's not being in this place of um, being rebellious, all-knowing and clever and unrepentant, self-centered and entitled. The disciples came to Jesus and said, I want to be number one. I want to sit with you on your throne. And Jesus said, whoa, whoa, turn away from your sin. That's where your heart is not at the right place. Your heart needs to be humble and pure and um, unadulterated. And so in terms of sin for a child, we, um, in a sense, when, I understand when they have no boundaries and they don't, they ha- they're not sin conscious yet, they just live life without knowing really that there's like these boundaries, without really knowing that there's sin that's still there. In a sense for us as Christians is to live this life. We know that there's sin. We know that we are, sometimes we fall into traps and stuff. But to live this life knowing that our heart needs to be toward Jesus and not wanting to fall into this, into this pit. Just to live life. And I'm not saying we must live a licentious life where we say everything goes. No. But is this just pure, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, no consciousness of an innocent, innocent, really be like a ch- child that is innocent, living in, in such a manner. The third point that I want to encourage us with is to be welcoming, hospitable. Welcome someone who is humble as a child. Um, often Jesus, I think it's in Matthew 10, Jesus was talking about little ones in the sense of his disciples. And he says that if you welcome these disciples, you are like you are welcoming me. There's a great reward. And for us as Christians, we need to welcome those who are humble. We need to welcome little children. We need to welcome Christians. We need to welcome God's people into our homes. And even if it's not Christians, to be welcoming, to be a people that is hospitable. And the question is, do you want Jesus in your home? Jesus is saying, if you are welcoming one of these, it's like you are welcoming me. And I'm guaranteeing you, some of, some of us that has, been, uh, that has hosted people or that is... Um, brought people into our homes in a sense of caring for them and nurturing them. 
God's blessing is on your home because you are obedient and you're helping them. And you are, you are like Jesus' hands and feet toward that person. And there's a double blessing. That person is experiencing the love of Christ and you are experiencing the love of God and the blessing of God in your home. And so our heart is not to invite people to have blessings. Our heart is, Lord, I want to be your hands and feet to welcome people and be um, hospitable in my house. I want to say for us that has done children's ministry, that's working with children, teachers that is working with children, uh, therapists, you that are building and, and working into children's lives spiritually and in terms of teaching and helping and training them, it's the same as welcoming Jesus into that, as, uh, into that atmosphere. It's you are welcoming the King of Kings, the King of Glory into that space when your heart is willing to work, work with those children. Those are down at children's ministry that's giving up your time. That is, in a sense, that your ministry, you're building into those kids' lives and you're giving them skills, you're training them and giving them, uh, building scriptures into their hearts. It's like you're welcoming, welcoming those little children into your space and you're giving them the life of Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage us young adults, don't lose heart in the season where we are going through a little bit of parenting. Help us as we, um, as we parent and, and build build kingdom into our parents' lives. Help us to help with the little children and be reminded whenever you do that lesson, we are starting to uh, start with praying, you're starting with that lesson, you're welcoming Jesus into that atmosphere because you're welcoming um, His children. So did you know that this, uh, there was a little child that became a king in the Bible? Can you believe it in uh, the, the, the king of Judah? Um, in two, uh, Chronicles 34, we, know, we read up the king of uh, Josiah. Josiah was eight years old. How old did Mar Marcus get? Eight, eight years. Remember, just imagine yourself, Marcus being king of a nation. Um, at eight years old, this, this little boy became king. Yes, you can imagine the responsibility. And so we've got this perception of what a king does and what he's going through and all the responsibility that's on his shoulders and leading a nation. It must be terrifying. Um, but Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his ancestor David. He did not turn away from doing what was right. What an uh, incredible thing that this kid chose to follow God in, in all his ways. The next one, 2 Chronicles 34 verse. Three, during the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, Josiah began, began to seek the God of his ancestor David. Then in the twelfth year, of, uh, he began to purify Judah and Jerusalem, destroying all the pagan shrines, the Ezra poles, and the carved idols and cast images. Next one. In the eighteenth year of his reign, after he had purified the land and the temple, Josiah, Josiah Josiah appointed Shaphan son of Azaliah, Maaseiah, the governor of Jerusalem, and jo jo Joah, son of Johaz, the royal historian, to repair the temple of the Lord his God. And just uh, Bruce shared this uh, on, on the pastor's group, and it was so in line with what I was prepping for, for this morning. And I'm reminded, guys, that we are building into little kings' lives as children's ministries, as parents, these kids have got the capacity to worship God. They've got the capacity to understand to, to a point that they, this is wrong and this is right. This is what it is to follow God and this is what it is to follow uh, worldly standards. And I love when he came to age, he purified Ju uh, Jerusalem and Ju uh, Judah. He, um, he destroyed the idols. And I'm saying, I want to encourage us that we are bringing through kids that's going to purify our nation. It's going to purify their hearts and their friends. They are going to rip away idols. They're going to be done with drugs. They want to follow Jesus with everything in them. We are the ones that is instilling that, 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 I want to say, we are the mentors in their lives. We are the ones that's building into their hearts. And as they get older and they've got the resources, they're building this temple. We're going to send out kids that's going to be older in that, in that day that's going to plant churches, evangelists, guys that it's going that might never come back because they're taking the gospel. We are building into these kids' lives for the king and his kingdom. Friends, it's not just mom and dad getting up on a, on a morning and trying just to get through a routine and children's ministry ministers that just wants to go through a lesson. We are building God's kingdom into our children's lives and it's incredible honor. 
And in the same way, I want to say that we are like, we are like these kings, Josiahs. We've got God's call in our lives, and we are ushering in His kingdom. So we're working with kings, and we ourselves are kings. We need to re- be reminded in Genesis 1, verse 26 to 28, we ought to reign over the creation. God has given us permission and has given us authority to reign. And who reigns? Kings reign. So I want to say we are kings and queens in our house. We got the authority to stand and speak the truth and speak the life of God in our situations. You are ruling and reigning in your house, your office and your family. You are the king of your house. And so I want to encourage us to have fun. So can a king have fun? Of course, um, we can have fun as God's children. So we want to enjoy God's presence. We want to dance before Him. We want to be undignified. We want to be totally open and surrendered before Him. Um, There was someone in the Bible that we can refer to that in a sense had loads of fun. He really was just gave himself over to God in so many ways, and that's David. And I'd just like us to read 2 Samuel 6. 2 Samuel 6 verse 14, And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. And I can just imagine, I'm dancing with all my might. And I just can imagine David in front of the Ark of the Covenant, um, as they were moving it, he was dancing with all his might. He was um, jumping as high as he can, as far as he can. He was turning, he was shouting. And that is our, our hearts and our lifestyles. And I want to say, we can totally surrender ourselves before God and still stand with our bodies like this. And to a degree, that's fine. But are we totally surrendered before God if we're just going to stand like that before Him? There's something of our inner expression that comes out in our bodies that we, we want to explode with joy when we uh, da- dance and worship before the Lord. And so 2 Samuel 6 verse 22, Yes, and I am willing to look even more foolish than this, even to be humiliated in my own eyes. And what's really in our hearts that's not surrendered before God is fear of man. We don't really want to jump and do stuff before, before people. But when we really engage with God and, and we want to don- dance with all our might, in a sense, when we, when we do children's ministry, yes, sometimes you need to put on a hat, you need to do stuff that looks silly, but you're worshipping God in that act. When you, when you do something for God's kingdom and people think you're totally foolish, what's foolish to the world is great wisdom in God's eyes. And so we ought to have fun. And uh, just the encouragement there is <clears throat> uh, 2 Samuel 6.22, Matthew 6.22. Your eyes is a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. And we also know that when our eye is bad, our whole body is, is filled with darkness. Just like David, that he had his eye on the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, something of the light of God penetrated his heart and his body, and it expressed outwards, outwardly to worship him in spirit and truth. When our eye is good, when we keep our focus and our eye on the presence of God, the light comes in, and we can't help but our body would shine and, and, and glorify God through our, our body. So our focus ought to be Jesus, looking at him, focusing on him. And as we're looking into his presence, our bodies and our, uh, our being will be lit up. Some people think that Christianity is boring. Boredom is being inactive. If so, find something to do. So people think that your Christianity is boring. So so boredom is being inactive. Oh, you want me to look at certain people in the the room? (laughs) Boredom is being inactive. If so, find something to do. (laughs) JP Muri Skorl Goodbass. No, I'm just kidding. some people think uh, Christianity is uninterest, uninteresting, and so we need to be more curious. Some people think there's a lack of fun being a Christian. People believe Christianity is boring and, and no fun because they must give up all, this, all the fun things they have to do. Although it's true that we do give up certain things as Christians in our lives, but it's not the fun element that we're giving up. We're giving up our sin. We are giving up self-destructive behavior. We're giving up addictions and negative attitudes. In return, we receive righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Spirit. We are becoming everything God has created us to be. It is virtually impossible to be bored as a Christian. Really. 
The only thing in this world that has eternal value is our relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that will stand forever. A growing and committed Christian will find that life is never boring. If you are growing, if you're pursuing God, life will never be boring. You'll always have something to do. There's always another step of faith to take. Another relationship to be built. And another to person to serve. And the Christian life supposed to be, is, is the Christian life supposed to be boring? Absolutely not. Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance. And so people think that Christianity, there's no fun. I'm telling you, for, from the day that I became a Christian, I had never had so much fun being a Christian than before I met Christ. It's a total freedom. There's a total enjoyment with friends and family. Yes, we're giving up things, but we know we're giving up things for the good of our growth. It's not going to be destructive. And so just the last point that I want to mention is that we ought to laugh. Laughter is good for us. We are created in the image of God and we are able to perceive and express humor. So if we are made in the image of God and we laugh and we can express these things, it comes from God because He also laughs. Sometimes what we perceive as funny would not always uh, be amusing to, to the holy and perfect God. So sometimes we make jokes that is un, unholy and not so pure. And it's funny to us, but I think God is just sitting there. Like. But anyway, um, so, so sometimes we can, we can, uh, we can laugh and, and we, need to be, we need to have humor. And so in our purity and honesty, we can perceive, enjoy and express comical and funny stories. We can also laugh because we are filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. I remember one input weekend with Bruce. Yeah, this Holy Spirit just came in a meeting. Eh? And half of the church, almost everyone in the church laughed. Some people rolled on the, on the mat just laughing. And that is something that sometimes happens when the Holy Spirit comes on us. Some people cry in that moment. Some people really laugh out of their, out of their belly. And so um, that's something that comes from God. Laughter is from God. Proverbs uh, 17 verse 22, a joyful heart is good medicine. So don't go to this game, just have a, have a good, have a good um, heart, a joyful heart. But the cross spirit dries up the bones. And the next slide. So here's the medicine, the benefits of a belly laugh. If you really laughed so hard that your, your tummy aches and you're starting to cry, you can imagine that picture, right? So the benefit of a belly laugh is it enhances oxygen intake to stimulate the heart, lungs, and muscles, increase endorphins release in the brain, it eases pain, so that knee pain will disappear for that while when you, no, I'm just kidding, De uh, decrease the body's stress response, stimulate circulation and aid muscle relaxation, strengthen the immune system, and improve mood. So it's really what God has been saying in Proverbs is that it's medicine for our bodies. Science has now uh, just showed that. Job 8 verse 21. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter. He will fill your mouth with laughter. And your lips um, with shouting. Psalm 16 verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. Yo man, we cannot find joy other than in God's presence. You will always have um, a void in your heart. Whether it be your hobbies whether it be your career, whether it be family, whether it be a vacation, those things are good, but without God, it will never be, it will never be fulfilling to us. But there's fullness of joy in God's presence. I'm telling you, we've heard testimonies where people in the underworld church in China and, and all these places, they are so content with God's presence. They're in a cave, they, they're in prison, but they've got the joy of the Lord. And they do not have vacations, they do not have... Sunday meals, they do not have all these other privileges, but the joy of the Lord is what is keeping them going. And says, there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We know that uh, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. So at the right hand of the F Father are pleasures, pleasures, pleasures. We're thinking of, oh, I want pleasures in life. Jesus Christ, have a relationship with Him. He he's, our, he's the pleasure of our lives. just want to conclude and say we don't want to miss these opportunities with our kids to have fun with them sometimes our lives can be so busy and we choose to make our lives busy we want to create little professionals they need to be good at maths and sports and all these things and I'm not saying they are bad but when they only get your affection when they are good at sport or good at something they will always be in a performance treadmill 
Jesus loves us doesn't matter our performance. Jesus loves us doesn't matter our, our state. He loves us unconditionally. And that is the way that we should love our children. It doesn't, they don't have to perform for us. We know that we do um, uh, good behavior. We, um, we encourage good behavior and we discipline bad behavior. Those things we understand. But there really needs to be a heart connection with our children. And just for us as young adults, as we are working through parenting, maybe there's a few points that is touching your heart because your parents wasn't 100% the parents that you thought they would be. And we are all broken people. We are all people that, that make mistakes. So there, there needs to be forgiveness. There needs to be an understanding that not everyone is perfect. But let God come and deal with those areas in our hearts where we felt rejected, where we didn't have a mother or father. My mom and dad got divorced when I was five years old. So those things have got a great impact in your life. But by the grace of God, I could experience total healing in my heart. And I know that because of what Jesus and His grace in my life now, we can bring through um, a, a beautiful daughter. And so I want to encourage us to um, have fun with our children. We want, uh, we want to paint this big white can with, with, with colorful paint. Um, some might feel you want to... Uh, Okay, so some people might feel that they want, they want to reach out in sense of, they want to go into uh, pov- uh, places that has got high poverty. They want to reach the children there. They want to love on the children there. But just sometimes feels like those ministry doors doesn't open for you. It might, might be for specific people. But I want to encourage us, start in the church. Start in the local church. There are some kids that struggle with math. There are some kids in the church that, that need some sp- um, sport, help, or any of those things. We, we need facilitators at the River Kids. If you've got a heart for children, start here in the safe space, in church. There's a lot of need in our children. Obviously with the parents knowing about you wanting to, to help children and so on. So we, wanna, we want to create those spaces. And so fathers and mothers, sometimes it might be stretching for us to go on our knees to our children's level, to really and I can imagine for the old, older folk, it's difficult because you don't have that energy that you want to put into the children. But it's, sometimes it's stretching for us. Sometimes it's going to take our, our time and our money, and it's going to take our energy and to go down to our kids' level and just have that time with them. And so often we think, ah, my, child, my child needs something to do. I'll give them cash. I'll give them something. But that will never fulfill the, the affection that he was looking for, from you. So this often, this uh, morning after the service, we're going to have games ready and it's going to be stretching for some of us. But let's engage and have fun. Let us just, let those walls break and just relax and, and just be family. Have fun. Let us be family and let's laugh together. We're going to put up some photos during the week, just what God has done in Riverflow the past year, just some key points this past year. Just reflect on that and just know that we are so blessed to have one another. To be here as a family together, um, to love one another, to be there for one another, to be praying for one another. It's awesome, this family that God has brought together. Lord Jesus, we love you. Father, in my heart, help me to have more fun, Lord. (laughs) Sometimes we feel like we just want to be this professional. We just want to sit in the office and we just want to get the work done. But Lord, sometimes you call us to our children just want us to sit with them and build into their lives. I'm just so reminded with this parenting course, what Yanis and Salome have shared on, on Wednesday, is we don't only build in our kids' lives when there's confrontation. There's going to be gaps and times in our children's lives when they ask questions, and we need to be sensitive in those times. Not only when there's confrontation, but when they're really opening up their hearts. And so, Father, I pray as parents, help us, help us, Lord, to bring these children through for your kingdom, Lord. It's not about us, Lord, but it's all about you and your kingdom. And just as the scripture says, um, we need to think of others more important than ourselves. In humility, value others above yourselves. And so, Father, our our hearts is to build your kingdom into other people's lives. Not to be self-centered, but we want to be humble like little children, Lord. Father, help us to take this brush with a paint, and paint on this canvas, and to have fun, and to enjoy our kids, and to, to build with our friends in the church, Lord Jesus. This is a safe space that you've created for us. As we're moving into this season, Father, we just want to 
We don't want to let go of these walls and this, this fear of man and this pride. We just want to enjoy your presence. We love you, Jesus. We pray your blessing upon everyone here this morning. Where they go and what they do, may they be successful. May your presence go before them, Lord Jesus. The people that they touch and work with, may they be healed in Jesus' name, Father. Father, you've called us to be the light in this world. I pray that where River Flow Flo go, where your church goes, it will have a great impact in this city, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit, that you are working and touching our hearts. We pray for your provision in everyone's life here. Just feel, Lord, where we felt like we don't know where the next provision is going to come from. Lord, you are our provision. We, we hold on to you, Father. We pray for your hand of provision in everyone's life here. Thank you for your goodness. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name.